So in this video I want to talk about how you import Navisworks models into Blender or Maya or 3ds Max. So these models are usually um, quite common with things like oil rigs and uh, heavy machinery. So it's quite a specialized um, type of use case. So the thing with Navisworks models is you can actually just go into here export is it as an FBX but if I export this whole assembly as an FBX it's going to be so large that it's going to crash the software that I import it into just because of the sheer number of polygons that it comes in with. So how do you do this? Now there's, there's, there's two ways to do this. One is if you're lucky, if you hover onto this right window, it will give you a selection tree. And in this instance, I'm lucky because the person that actually put the models together created hierarchies of each part. So I can select, for example, mod A, and what you do is the easiest way to navigate things in here is to use hide hide unselected and unhide all right so what you would do is you'd say hide unselected and it shows you the part that you've selected so the way you navigate navis works if you've got a three button mouse is with the middle mouse button to pan middle mouse and shift to orbit so the orbit isn't great uh, I mean an easier way to orbit is if you select a part and then you orbit around it so shift middle mouse shift to pan mouse wheel scroll to zoom in so this actually gives me that particular part right so I've isolated that particular part so then what you need to do next is you need to look at this assembly and you need to determine which parts are necessary in your visualization and which ones are not. Now a common sense way to determine this is to first plot a camera path that you'd like put in placeholders in your 3D scene so if I'm in Blender for example you know I could come into here put in some you know placeholders like I can make this cube you know scale it up right so I say okay this is one of these towers that's another one that's another one create a camera right um, you grab the camera they go G determine a camera path see where it's gonna pass right I'm not gonna go into all that because that would be very long that would be a whole other lecture so you take your camera path you determine where you want to go with it and once you're done with that then you know which part which sort of areas you want to highlight so in the case of this Navisworks model if I just unhide all you can see you have these jackets at the bottom and you've got the structures at the top you've got these cranes so you've got to determine where you want to produce oh you want to place your emphasis so once you've done that then you go and determine which parts you're going to export out and which ones you're going to leave so let's go and get on to that part so let's work on something easy to start with so for example this part here so what what happens with these models is they come in as pieces like this won't come in as a whole assembly when you select it so selection in Navisworks is to your right it's this right arrow here and you can box select from here so I found it a bit easier just to use the normal selection tool so what you do is you go to the selection box and you look at the assembly 
right so it's telling me that this assembly is sitting in this particular hierarchy which is FFA central mod P right so the easiest way to sort of select this piece is to look at where it's sitting in the hierarchy so if I select that it's giving me the left side if I select that it's giving me this entire piece once I've got the entire piece selected what I'll do is I'll say hide unselected once you've got that then what you do is this is a cool function in Navisworks which is saving selections right so what you would do is with each piece you need you click save selection so I've already saved my selections out here right you can see it's pretty big so it creates a selection set what you do is you do that you go into here and you can rename it so I'd say Q structure for example okay now I've got this saved in here so what I've done is in my case I've gone through the entire model this was the hard part and just saved out all the parts that I'd like to export into my blender file so then what you can do is you can do unhide all now if I wanted to select just this piece again you know I don't need to go into that hierarchy with you know all the I don't need to go into here and then find the assembly in here what I can do is I can go to my selection sets I can select Q as I have done here and I'll say hide unselected once I've done that I'll come into here and I say file export FBX so important setting here is the number of polys like it's a I think in my opinion it's a good idea to set a limit just because you're going to end up in trouble if you export really really big assemblies when you decide to bring it all into blender right so what you then do is you say embed right in terms of the texture and you hit OK so it will export what you need out and I'll show you what happens when you import that assembly into Blender right so I've got an empty Blender scene so I'll say file import FBX and do import FBX right this will take a little while and it's imported in so if I look in my Blender file it's going to create a hierarchy based on what the hierarchy was in the Navisworks file I select that for example just to orient myself to the model and I don't see anything and the reason for that is because of my clipping planes so I need to raise this up and then pick some of this geometry here and it's given me the geometry that I exported out of Navisworks so now I've got this assembly here but if you look at it these are all individual pieces right and they're sitting in this hierarchy so what I ideally want to do is I want to join them and pull them out of this hierarchy so that I can then organize them how I like so what you would do I think without knowing how this all works is you could go into here and you could say select select all by type mesh right you grab one of these guys and you say object join right now this will take a bit of time because it's going to the hierarchy it's join the objects and then if I want to get it out of this hierarchy I'll say object parent clear parent keep transforms so that gives me my part now there's just one issue with this part is each and every single part that comes out of this even though it's got the same material is going to get assigned a different material slot and this has and we've ended up with 1200 and 1474 material slots just on this right and uh, you could try to change it you could 
go into Blender using Material Utilities and delete all the slots and then reassign them. An easier way to solve this problem of the multiple material slots let's go back a few steps before we join it so I'll just go back right so all the parts are separate so what you would do is you say object now you go to select select tool by type mesh and you would use a Python script to compress all those material IDs into one where the name is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3, etc. So it just concatenates all that into one into one um, um, set of material one material ID. So I got this code this code this Python code of stack overflow so you copy the code you pop it into there you run the code let it run then what you do is to stop the code you hit control shift O right um, so you need to save it to your existing file so what I'll do is I'll say save as and I'll just save this untitled file to my desktop so that stopped the script from running if I then go to layout there's just one material ID assigned to everything now what you can do is you can select one of these guys here like this you can say object and you can join it it's taking a little time but it's joined the object you got one object you got one material ID now a second aspect to bringing these models into 3d software is the poly counts so you go into here you hit statistics now this is telling me that I've got 66,000 faces for this so if I bring in a hundred of these um, you do the math 66 times 100 you'd end up with what is it 600,000 or 6 million polys someone who's good with the math do the math um, so what you need to do next is you need to decimate it so you use a decimate modifier here use the one that best suits you and bring down the poly count and then you're good to go and that's how you bring in Navisworks assemblies into Blender and get them into a format that you can actually then render or animate or whatever else you need to do if you like the Python script please give me a like and a comment and I will send it to you or you can just look it up on stock stack overflow thank you for watching